Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my C++ Fundamentals course. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can store data inside of a variable, how we can create them, the different types such as integer, floats, booleans, and also doubles. We're going to be breaking down exactly what each of those are, when we'd use them, and how we can create them using C++. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now we're inside of Visual Studio, we can start beginning to tell you exactly what a variable is and the uses it's going to have inside of programming. A variable is essentially just a piece of data. It is as simple as that. It is data which is being stored on the memory. And there is loads of different types of memory that you can store for your different objects in terms of information. So what I mean by that is you are going to have all different types of variables integers, booleans, doubles, floats, and more. And there's loads of different types. And we're going to be going through this video, breaking them down step by step so you know exactly what they are and when you should be using them. So let's go ahead and start off from the very top. What we're going to be doing is setting up an integer. Now in this video, we're also going to be showing you how you can set up a integer, a float, a double, and a boolean as well. In your code here, if you haven't corrected it already, add the semicolon in from the last video that we removed to generate that syntax error. Now, creating a variable is actually really simple. Just below my preprocessor statements here, I'm going to add a new line. And then from here, we simply type in the name of the variable that we're trying to create. So the type rather. So in this case, we want to declare an integer. So what we're going to do is type in int because this is an integer. We're then going to give this variable a name and I'm going to give this a name variable test. And then what we can do from there is we can simply tell the compiler what this is going to be equal to. So space equals to, and then we're going to set this equals to 69. And then just like any other statement, what you need to do is end that off with a semicolon. And that is it. We have our very first variable here. Now, one thing I do want to mention when you're creating your integer is your integer does not have to have a value straight away. So what you can do is you can actually simply just say this variable exists, it's going to allocate it to the memory, but it's not actually going to have any information in there, just like this. Now, for those of you that don't know exactly what an integer is, an integer is simply a numerical value. It does not have any decimal places and it's going to store up a range from minus 2.1 billion all the way up to positive 2.1 billion. And it's going to store and use four bytes of memory. Now, that range that I just mentioned there is simply down to the memory allocation. It can only take up to four bytes. Now, I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail into memory allocation in a later video in this series. But what you do want to keep in mind and take away from this integers and numerical values without decimal places. So with that done, we've created our integer there. We know what one of them is. What we're now going to do is show you how you can actually use this inside of your code. So what I'm going to do is set this to 69 again, just like that. And then on a new line here, we are going to be printing onto the screen the value of that integer that we've just created. So we're going to do std colon colon c out and then we're going to use the two little arrows there. And instead of typing in the quotation marks and some hard coded text, we can just make it print out whatever the value of this variable is. So we're going to do variable test, the one that we just created. And as you can see here, it has prompted us saying there is an integer with that name in that file. So go ahead and use that. And then what we're going to do is simply add the semicolon on there to finish it off. And if we were to run this through the local Windows debugger, you're going to see it is going to get the value from that variable test, and then it is going to print it onto the screen just like this. So now you know it is very simple to reference a variable. All you've got to do is just use its name just like that. What I'm going to do now is just before we actually do that, we are going to change the value of that variable before it's printed onto the screen. So you can see how you can set it to something else. 
all we're going to do is simply variable test equals to, and we're going to set it to 101. And because this is before we print it onto the screen, what we're going to see is it's going to display 101. So it really is that simple to set a variable and also get a reference to a variable as well. One more thing that I want to show you with your integers and your variables is you can have unsigned variables and you can also have signed variables. And the difference between the two of those is if you do not need negative numbers, you can get rid of the symbol for that negative. So you can essentially have double the range because you're allocating more memory. And when I say you're allocating more memory, you have the same amount of memory, except you're not using a byte of that on having that sign in there. So let's say we wanted to have a value that goes up to 4.2 billion instead of 2.1 billion. All we're gonna do is simply have a unsigned variable. And to do that, just before your int declaration up here at the top here, all we're gonna do is type in unsigned just like that. And that is it. You can also have your signed, but we're just gonna leave it just like that for now. So now we know how to use an integer, let's move on to the next one, which is a float. So on the next line here, we are going to be declaring a float. For those of you that don't know what a float is, a float is again a piece of numerical data, but in this case, it is going to have decimal places, which is the main difference between this and a integer. A float is also going to use four bytes of memory, just in the same way that it is here. So let's go ahead and create a float. A float, all you need to do is type in float. We're gonna give this variable a name. So we're gonna do float test, and then we're gonna set the value of this to 101.11. And then we are simply going to use the semicolon there to end off that statement. And as you can see here, when it comes to declaring variables, they are more or less going to be done in exactly the same way. If we were to reference this, we can do it very easily. So I could take my variable test here and I could just simply change this to float test. So as you can see, referencing a variable, you just reference a name and that's it. If we were to run this through the debugger, you would see it's going to display 101.11. And that is all good there. Now, one thing I do want you to keep in mind is that when you're creating your floats, you need to add F onto the end of that number there. And the reason for that is because by default, it is going to assume that this is going to be a double. So just add your F on there and it is going to be a float. Talking of doubles, Doubles is another type of variable, very similar to a float. Essentially, it's just a float with double the amount of memory. Now, what I mean by that is it's gonna have eight bytes of memory instead of having four. So you can essentially have twice the range that you would in terms of decimal places. So you guys can probably imagine exactly how you're going to use this. Now, when it comes to creating that double, all you're doing is typing in double, and then we're gonna do double test as the name, and we're gonna set this to 101.593. And then this time we're not gonna add the F, and we're just gonna add the semicolon there. And just like before, referencing a double, all you're going to do is simply type in the name of the variable, just like that. And we can also change, or set rather, these values to something different as part of our code just by referencing the variable name. So what we're gonna do is double test equals to, and we're gonna set this to 69.59. And we're gonna end that off with a semicolon just like that. And now if we was to run this through the debugger, you can see it is going to show us that decimal information stored as part of that double there. So there is one last variable that I wanna introduce you to, and that is a Boolean. A Boolean is a very simple variable. In fact, the most simple that you can get. It is essentially going to be true or false, the equivalent of yes or no. And it is gonna be commonly used in if statements and other logic inside of C++. For example, 
You might want to store information telling your game or application whether or not you can actually do something. So for example, in your video game, is the player alive, true or false? If it's true, then we're going to be able to complete the next action. So true or false statements are very, very useful. And with these, they're going to be stored inside of this boolean. And that boolean is going to have just the one byte of memory. It's just going to be changing from zero to one. One being true, false being zero. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how we can create this. All we're doing is typing in bool and then the variable name, which is going to be bool test. And then from here, we're simply setting this to either true or false. So simply true and then a semicolon, just like that. Or the alternative is false and then the semicolon. And then what we can do in here as part of our code, we can very easily reference this once again. All we're doing is simply typing in the variable name, which is going to be ball test. So type that in, ball test. And then what you're going to see is when you run it through the debugger, it's actually going to show us zero. And that is because our ball test is currently set to zero, which is false. What we can do is reference that again. All we're going to do is ball test. We're going to set this equal to true. And then what you're going to see is when we run it through the local Windows debugger up here, it is going to change to one because that is now true. It's all good and ready to go. So hopefully that has given you guys a better understanding of how some of the different types of variables work, what they do, and also how to create them, reference them, and get them into your C++ code. So you can see what we've worked with is integers, floats, doubles, and booleans. Now there is a couple of other variable types, but these are the main ones. We will be showing you a few more as we go deeper into the course, but these are the simple ones that is going to make up the main foundation of your games and your applications. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Move on to the next one, but for now, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.